Welcome to the Fit for Success podcast. Brian Semling is an experienced entrepreneur with over 25 years in business. He is the founder and CEO of Blitz Innovation. He has built several brands such as Brian's Toys, a collectible toy business, to several Amazon FBA brands like Strictly Bricks and Clever Creations. His latest adventure is Rovox, a modern athleisure footwear brand which can be found at rovoxfootwear.com. On the podcast, Brian will talk with other entrepreneurs and social media influencers about their entrepreneurial journey, from what it takes to start and run a business to how they may continue to grow their brands and where they see themselves in their businesses in the future. And now, here's your host, Brian Semling. Welcome to the Fit for Success podcast. I'm Brian Semling. Today, our guest is Enrique Delgadillo. Welcome, Enrique. Hey, Brian. Nice to be here. Um, Enrique, you and I have chatted for a few minutes and, um, you know, you've got a, a very, uh, interesting and compelling, uh, background and, and an interesting story. So I'd love for you to, um, to share that with us and just to kind of tell us about yourself and your journey to where you're at now. And so, um, yeah, again, thanks for having me on. And today I am what you would call a 5d consciousness coach. And I'm also founder of a company called Vive Increíble, where, where we focus on personal evolution. Where we're serving people with personal evolution and helping them find what we call their secret sauce and uh, for understanding how to unlock that next level of wealth in, in their lives in, in every sense. And I've been, doing this for, been doing this for about 10 years as we were talking a little bit ago, but where this really started was 15 years ago, because I used to work for my dad in this construction business that he had. And I remember something that my dad told me when I was about 16, 17 years old. He said, Enrique, what do you want to be when you're older? Yeah. I told him that I wanted to be a musician because I play drums and and guitar. So he asked me what what I wanted to be. And I said, well, I want to be a musician. I want to be a rock star. You know, I want to play in front of people and make music. He says, I understand this now. And he did it with all the, the, the best intentions and he wanted to protect me. And he says, um, you know, it's, it's very hard for, for people to make it, you know, doing that. So why not just, you know, join the business, the family business, and that way you can start making some money. And maybe if you do well, you, know, you can play music on the side or make it a hobby or whatever. And, and I believed it, you know, I said, okay, yeah. I'll do it. So I spent the next 10 years of my life working for my dad. I was not passionate about the construction business. I didn't like it at all. And the whole time I was there at this job, which I I saw it as a job, um, I just dreamed of doing something else. I just dreamed of playing the guitar or whatever other thing I had going on in my head. I was never committed to it. So I started developing a lot of uh, problems with my dad. So he loved the business and I did not love the business. So he would be like, why don't you have any like initiative? Why are you so lazy? Why? So we started developing this, you know, this very, very tough uh, relationship. And it wasn't until about 2008, 2009, 2009, actually, when I found out I was going to be a dad, I was already 27 years old, mind you. And I still lived in my mom's house. Um, I was not financially independent. I could barely get by on my own. And I find out that I'm going to be a dad, right? And so my dad, he was making plans to take the construction business to Playa del Carmen in the Yucatan. And uh, he did that, but I couldn't go. I couldn't go because I had to stay and be a dad. So funny thing is that when you're a dad and you see, you look down at what was my daughter, and you see this little being that depends 100% on you doing well, um, it's not the same anymore. It's, not, it's like, okay, I, I can't just let myself fail. And so that's when, because uh, I, I, I still did the construction thing. And that's when I said, I need to do something more. I need to do something more. And I'd understood by that, by that time that doing things that I didn't like was not the way. Right. So then I asked myself, well, what do you like? And I developed a passion for personal development, for finding my confidence, for finding my own self-esteem and um, learning to be a better person, a bigger person, to having more confidence in general. So I started doing videos on that. I started posting videos on YouTube about that. This was, this was you know, back in the day when there weren't any YouTubers or influencers 
So it was relatively easy to post videos online and get them seen. And it was almost an instant success. And it was like, I, I finally found what I'm good at. And from there, it just took off. And for the last 10 years, I've been doing this whole online training, helping others through self-evolution to find bigger and better wealth from the inside out. Cool. Yeah, it's interesting. He really kind of took a situation that was, um, you know, kind of lemons turned into lemonade by, and, and, and your, your daughter kind of helped um, that along in terms of maybe a level of seriousness or just a reset, basically, right? You've just been kind of getting along, getting by with your dad's business and it really wasn't. Um, and probably because you weren't engaged, you weren't, you didn't show that initiative. You didn't love it because it wasn't really not necessarily because you lacked the ability, but you, you didn't care. It just wasn't the right fit for you basically. Right. So you, you didn't get a chance to, um, develop, you, you know, you just kind of were in the kind of, a, it sounds like the same place, not progressing forward basically, because you weren't in a place that you really were passionate about. And once yeah, exactly. You that, exactly. Because when you finally get what business is about and business isn't even about, it's, it's not about number. It's not even about money. It's about people. And when you understand that you will do well in business, when you understand what people need and where they're at and what they're feeling. And so you develop a, a passion for that service and for that understanding. Um, how can you even get there when you don't love what you're doing? How can you even get there when you don't love serving those people? So I didn't love serving people when I was in the construction business. I didn't even, I didn't even know what service meant. I just thought of it as going to a job and getting money, you know? So yeah, how can you even be, uh, how can you even express your creativity when doing something you don't love? What were some of the challenges you faced once you made that pivot? I mean, it's, it sounds like it was pretty easy. Um, there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, competition per se, but there must've been some challenges along the way in the early years that what did you have to overcome? Well, you know, there wasn't a lot of competition per se, but also it was a pretty unexplored market, at least here in Latin America. There wasn't a lot of people that understood that, oh, you can buy training online. You can buy an online course. You can, you know, get some help online with this. So while getting the video views and the subscribers was relatively easy, you know, making the sales, that wasn't as easy. Right. So there wasn't that much awareness around this. So you have, you come into the situation where you have to educate people on why they should probably consider taking an online course. It's not like today, today, you know, everyone just thinks, Oh, I, I want to learn this. Maybe I'll take an online course. It wasn't that way you know, back in the day. It was uh, more of a, a process of trying to help people understand why they should listen to you and why there were no influencers, you know, the influencer thing wasn't a thing. It was just, you know, Oh, cool. So I see this video and this guy's talking to me about this, but the person has no idea that they can actually pay you for something. Right. right. So you had to, there was less competition, but you also had to kind of pioneer the, like the pay for, I guess, education model, if you will, basically for your, for your clients and kind of get that, get them educated. It was harder to get from point A to uh, point B in terms of getting them to, to pay you for a course or a, a training. Is that, is that right? Yeah. I mean, even you had to figure example, it out. Yeah. Even coaching today is, you know, widely accepted as something that, that you do back then coaching was very limited to maybe something that high level executives get from their company or, or things like that. It wasn't a big thing today. There's just the coaching business is just huge. Right. But it wasn't like that back then. So um, people didn't see you as, Oh, um, that that's a solution for my problem. Right. It's just, Oh, this guy makes videos and he helps me out. That's awesome. But they, it wasn't, there was never this correlation of, you know, like, oh, okay, I can pay for this. Right. To go further, basically I can get one-on-one -on -one or, a more in-depth training program or what have you. Um, so shifting gears a little bit, uh, talk more about the, um, you know, kind of tapping into your 5D consciousness to connect your higher self and what that, what that means. Oh, I love that question, man. So 
what we call dimensions of consciousness. It's basically just a way of understanding this evolution process that every single being goes through and experiences um, to a more expanded consciousness. So different levels of consciousness, like 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D, is just what we experience as, you know, 1D being, the being exists and barely even knows it exists, like maybe a crystal uh, would do. Um, 2D is the being knows it exists, but all it does is the way it perceives the world around itself is, can I eat that or will that eat me? That is the most basic survival mode. Like maybe um, bacteria or plants might be in that level of consciousness. Um, Next one, 3D is where the being perceives itself and its surroundings as, can I eat that? Will that eat me? But it goes further than that. It It starts to create expansion. So it says, can I mate with that? Right. So at a very 3D level, um, a very ego 3D level, that's where we behave in a way in a way that's maybe a little defensive. And we try to save and not um, not express and not help, not serve, because it's always about us. That's a very ego place to be. Right. It's always about me and whether I can get what I need from that or whether that is trying to get what it needs from me or whether I can you know, reproduce um, 4D is when the being starts understanding, oh, wait, it's not just about me. That thing that I'm trying to eat or will it eat me or will I you know, mate with that, that is also having its own experience. Oh, so I can see things from another perspective. I'm not the main character in the story. There's another one too. And then 5D is when you can start to see yourself as the other being. Oh, that is a version of me. We are all one in the universe. And so it's just one wave talking to another wave, but it's really the ocean talking to itself. And I can start to experience myself as that being also. And it's amazing how unlocking this 5D consciousness in ourselves just makes our relationships and our businesses and our wealth just explode. Interesting. Um, so you have you spent the last 10 years kind of helping others on emotional and financial freedom. Describe how you've changed people's lives uh, through your help. Awesome. So when people come to me, it's usually because they're going through something difficult. And that might be in relationship, that might be in finance, but it's always something, it's always this a uh, kind of dark night of the soul experience where the soul doesn't feel complete. The soul doesn't feel like it feels disoriented. It, it happens when things change, you know, things change. And then we, we are not who we thought we were and the world was, isn't what we thought it was. Or sometimes, for example, it happens when somebody becomes very, very successful and they'll be like, okay, so I have everything that I wanted. I have everything I need, I have everything that I wanted, and I still don't feel fulfilled. Why is that? You know, I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It's happened to me a couple of times throughout my career. It's like, okay, so I have the house and I have the car and I have the partner and I have the kids and I have what everyone told me that I should have. Why am I still not fulfilled? And that's when we kind of discover that everything that everybody told us that we had to get was a lot of it was based on ego was based on an incomplete uh, being trying to find outside of itself what would complete it, right? What would complete you? And so that's a futile and endless process of just trying to complete myself with external things. So what I help people understand through their, what we call karmic and dharmic processes is understand exactly why it is that you're at this point in your life and what life is trying to teach you, what the universe is trying to channel through you at this moment into experience. Um, Why is it that you feel this way and how do we unlock that next level of fulfillment and wealth in your life? Interesting. You know, as we look at like kind of building your, um, uh, your brand, if you will, on social media, which one was the most instrumental in getting started and gaining uh, a large following. Rovox, where fashion meets fitness. Um, So I started out with YouTube. That was great back then. Um, I, I think it still is, just that after a few years, I shifted my focus to Facebook because Facebook started doing the Facebook ads thing. So... 
you know, I had to learn how to do online advertising and Facebook was an amazing way to do it. And, you know, the cost per lead, cost per click and cost per acquisition was just so incredibly cheap a few years ago. So we kind of focused on Facebook. So my Facebook audience grew. That's why it's almost 3 million today. And then after that, we started focusing, we started expanding into Instagram and other things, but still, I mean, Facebook is still huge for us today. So kind of transition from YouTube initially to Facebook, where you found a lot of success in advertising, and that led to just lots of people following you through Facebook and using that as a, uh, as a medium, basically, plus Instagram and others, but that was kind of your trajectory, if you will. So how, uh, with everything that you have going on, how do you incorporate a healthy lifestyle um, into your life? Oh, man, that is such a good question. That is such a good question. Because I think we need to ask that uh, more. We need to ask ourselves that you know, a, a lot more because it's very, very easy to get caught up in the, you know, the numbers and I got to do the sales and I got to do, you know, go through the motions and do the things. And sometimes we just get lost. We lose ourselves, uh, really, literally lose ourselves. And so I think um, a really good question that I ask myself consistently, and so it's so basic, but it's, but it's so important, is what do I want to do now? Like, what do I want to do now? What do I have to do? Yeah. I think if we start replacing the have to's with what do I want to, I think our lives just get so much better because uh, sometimes the thing we want to do is not going, it's not congruent or it doesn't go in the same direction as what, you know, people tell us that our business should be doing. Oh, you gotta, you know, gotta, gotta go for expansion and you gotta, you know, do this and do that. It's like, but I want to do something else. Right. And then we just feel so trapped. Sometimes we feel trapped, like, but I can't because my business, but I can't because my family, but I can't because, and I say, there's always a way to do what, what you want. It's just making adjustments. And so I never, I used to lose sight of this, but now I try to never lose sight of it is what gets me going in the morning? Like what gets me excited? What do I want to do? And so why do, do we even want financial freedom if not to express ourselves in what we want to do and how we want to serve, not what we should be doing? Because I think too many people realize this too late in their lives. That they're maybe doing what they're doing because of other people's ideas or goals for them as opposed to maybe what they wanted for themselves yes exactly i think we just uh uh look around and uh get information from the people ever since we're little right and then we look at the social media and we look at people that we admire and, and then we start thinking like oh i should be doing this or i should be doing that and i'm like no way, man. You should be doing what you want to do. What is it that you want to do? What is it that your heart is telling you to do? And there's something there for you, right? Yeah. And, but the thing is, you know, breaking out of this social construct is very hard sometimes. Interesting. But your advice there is kind of like, listen to that voice of what you want to do instead of maybe what you have to do and try to, try to reconcile the two so that you can make that work, make that want into what becomes maybe more of your reality, kind of like when you, when you stepped out of the construction career into yep. your current role. So looking ahead over the next five or 10 years, where do you see yourself in your business? Where are things, um, you know, we can look back now, it's been 12, 13 years, um, and you've had um, a very good run and a huge kind of transformation from your prior career. Where did things go from here? So I think we're at a point where, you know, my personal brand is, is awesome and it's, it's, it's nice to be, you know, recognized on the street or, or whatever and have the millions of followers. But I think that it, it comes to a point where one's personal brand will not go as far as teaching others to take their own personal brand further. So something that we're really focusing on is developing leaders, you know, teaching other people to do what I do, teaching other people to have a, a massive following and have the... Uh, the, to create the business, to structure the business that will not just get them that financial freedom while they take their message to the world, while, they're, while, while they teach others what they know, but really through their self-evolution, show the world what's possible. You know, show the world how to overcome, how to create, how to do. I think we need more and better leaders today. I mean, if you see what's going on 
right now. I mean, today, March 2022, um, you know, the whole thing that's going on in Russia, Ukraine, and, and, and you just see that this world is begging for just better leaders that are focused yeah. not just on ego, on self, on defense, but on actually serving and connecting and uniting and unifying, right? So that's uh, something that we're really, really focused on today. Yeah. So I think what I heard you say is really like, you know, kind of taking another step with what you're doing to not just growing your own brand and business, but using that to help others grow their personal brand and influence and potential businesses, which, um, and maybe you've already done that, but to be more even um, conscientious of that as your goal, basically to, to, to have a larger impact through impacting others who can go on and make impacts. Is that? Yeah, right? that's, that's 100% accurate. I mean, when you, when you understand that the whole process, it's not about you, it's about the collective, it's about what you can contribute. It's about how, I mean, what, what good is it that you, you become very, very successful and you're living in a world where, you know, people are, are struggling every day with uh, whatever, no, we, we each have each different things in our different countries, but at least here, what I see in Latin America is like, so what is, what good is that you have a lot of success and that you have this big name or this big following when you see a lot of people around you that are really, really struggling. And um, I guess a part of you starts to emerge that wants to see people thrive, yeah. right? And you know that you're not going to go out and be the person who makes everybody thrive. You need other leaders. You need other people to get the message out there and help other people thrive, right? Right. Yeah. So that's cool. And you're already doing that, I think, but being just more conscientious of the fact that that's how you will have your biggest impact is through other people, basically. And that, uh, and that could be another like quantum leap forward, basically, as you focus on that. Um, thinking about work-life balance for a moment, how do you manage that in terms of, you know, family, work, you know, personal interests, perhaps things of that nature? Yeah, that's awesome. I have my non-negotiables. So one of the things that I'm very, very, very passionate about is spending time with my wife and my kids. So that is a non-negotiable. Like I will have that time and I allocate that time and nothing can take away from that time. No matter what's going on out in the world, that I'm going to spend this amount of time with my kids and my wife. Also, I like my time with myself, you know, that self uh, exploration of thoughts and, uh, you know, uh, thinking about life and philosophy. I do that a lot. So that's important for me to have my time to think. Remember, I, um, I heard, who was it that I, that I heard um, say this? It was, I can't remember who it was. It says, what I do, the guy that made millions and millions and millions of dollars, he says, a lot of the time, what I do is just walk through the park and think about what I want to do next. You know, think about what is it that excites me and what I want to do next. And I, and so I got a lot of inspiration from that. And that's what I do a lot. I, so I just spend ridiculous amounts of time just thinking and, you know, dreaming and thinking like, well, what's my next step? What do I want to create now? So I think a real big, a really important part of that is to have, is to create processes that allow you to, and that means delegating, that means hiring, that means creating teams of superstars that actually get things done so that you don't have to think about it, right? Oh. So that you can think about, you know, being the visionary, that, that's been important for me. So that's how I like to balance things. Just say, what are my non-negotiables? What am I willing to sacrifice? What am I willing to do or not do? And just have that like, you know, set in stone, right? And a good chunk of that to allow yourself just to think and have time to yourself to, you know, grow, develop, have time to take opportunities. I think that I, uh, I don't know if it's the same person or not that you're thinking of, but I know I had uh, seen something about Warren Buffett several years ago that said something like he tries to keep 80% of his schedule free for the uh, time to, you know, to, to basically have more, to not have his time book, to basically to have time to uh, deal with opportunities as they come up and also to maybe have that, that flexibility. And he's certainly one of the one of the richest men in the world. So it's kind of like, you'd think he could have like the busiest schedule of anybody and he's in his nineties now. So, but nonetheless, like he could have the busiest schedule or, you know, and I think he kind of specifically would go out of his way to not, you know, not book too many things in advance, basically. So kind of saving yeah. that time. Exactly. So it was Tim Ferriss, by the way, it was Tim Ferriss was the guy who was a four hour work week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a, uh, 
he's a good, uh, yeah, just a great book uh, from a number of years ago, probably just before you got started, right? Like I remember reading that book and it was kind of uh, inspiring and kind of like, wow, how is that possible? But if you set your mind to something, you can will it slash mm -hmm. there, basically. So um, we've had a great chat here and, uh, you know, just want to give you a chance. Is there anything that I haven't asked today that you wish that I would have asked? I think you've asked some, some really, really great questions. Maybe just one thing that I'd like to add. When we think about our struggles and we start, when we think about um, the, our pursuit of success is, you know, when do we really get to feel successful? And there's this quote that I'm gonna share with you. Uh, this is by Winston Churchill. And he said, success isn't final and failure isn't fatal. The important thing is the courage to keep going, right? So a lot of people out there, I know they're thinking about, I want the success. I want the things. I want the million dollar company. I want the, and then when you get there, doesn't matter what success is to you. When you get there, you realize, when you think that you're in the, at the top of the mountain, you see that there's another summit. You know, there's another top of the, another place that you got to be. And then and when you base your happiness on reaching those goals, it will be a never ending right. uh, game of cycles of, you know, um, futility and desperation, not feeling complete. So I think it's, as Winston Churchill said, it's, it's the, the courage to keep going. It's knowing that it's, I'm always going to be chasing kind of this carrot on a stick. And, you know, sometimes I'll get a bite and I'll just keep going, but there's always going to be that carrot in front of me and it's enjoying the process, you know, yeah. enjoying the process and asking myself, what am I looking outside of myself to complete me when I'm already complete, right? And so it becomes a process of just going out and living fully, not waiting until something happens or for me to get to the top of the mountain to start living fully, like do it now, right? Yeah, I think that you, I agree that the journey is like, I mean, you might never quite get to your destination. You might get there at the end of your life. You want to enjoy, be thankful for um, what you have, you know, each and every day. Like uh, none of us are promised, you know, more than today, basically, right? We certainly hope and um, generally uh, expect that, but that isn't what, um, and just, you don't want to get through your whole life and then look back and like, gosh, I didn't enjoy anything. And now here I got to my destination, but now, right, it's. So I fully, um, you have those goals, you realize that you're going to keep going even when you reach them, but also, you know, enjoying being thankful, um, showing gratitude. And, and as you point out a number of times, kind of impacting others along the way that kind of adds to that, to that value basically. So that's fantastic. Um, as we wrap up here, tell us, uh, just, uh, specifically how viewers could find you, you know, your, your website, your social media, any, uh, specifics on that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, most of what I do is in Spanish. I do some things in English too, but if you want to follow me on social, I am on Instagram as Kike Delgadillo. That's K-I-K-E Delgadillo in Instagram and or as Enrique Delgadillo in Facebook or on YouTube. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Enrique, it's been so nice to have you on the podcast today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Brian. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm Brian Semling, and this is the Fit for Success podcast.